Okay, switch battery voltage 23, 22, 21, and 20. Solenoid is operating. That guy is your uh, engine sensor. Bleeding the air from the fuel system. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything what I did to make a Cummins N14 start and run again. But before we'll begin, please go and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell and you won't miss any videos. Thank you so much. Today, crank, crank, no start. This is a N14 Plus Cummins. This truck is 1997. Western Star. 49.54, very popular truck. Now let's go and confirm the issue. What we have, and uh, yeah, okay. and see what what's going on here. So you know, stick shift, as you already know. Okay, let's show we in. Let's try to crank. Yeah, engine. check engine came on, means computer is alive. Let's give it a try. It's cranking good. Doesn't start. This engine widely used on different semi trucks and also on different types of equipment. There's N14, but it's pretty much the same as L10, M11. There's different variations, but generally the same idea. Always start with the fully charged batteries. My voltage is 12.7, which is perfect. And especially if truck sit for so long, like over a year, better went low, what you want to do, you want to charge the battery, but your computer engine control module or engine control unit, this guy has a battery inside and battery can go low and that will might cause no start. To charge the battery inside the ECU is what I did. Yeah. Like normally plug it in the charger to your batteries right. and then turn your, your key to the run position which is a position before it will crank right and leave it to overnight to charge and that should charge the battery to your computer that's the first thing. Some trucks uh, might have the fuses inside the battery compartment. Check those ones out. Could be a master fuse, uh, ACU fuses and some other ones there. Make sure they are good. And then we're going to our uh, well, it's sort of junction box. What are you going to do? You just check the ignition power relay. See this guy? If you look from the top it bolted to this bracket here this is a 70 amps ignition uh, relay check that one and we have another one here this one actually di disconnected it's called the accessories relay this is a 70 amps there you go this guy you can swap them and uh, check, make sure the relay is good, but you can also test the relay, whatever you prefer. As you can see here, there's an optional ignition fuse, 30 amps F16, check that guy. And um, ECU fuse at the ECU itself, it's on the side of the engine, on the driver's side, we're going there. And um, as you can see, there's this style of fuses, you cannot see if it's good or not just pull it out and check the continuity 
make sure electricity can flow and fuse is good and this is another compartment and check this uh, f33 fuse 5 amps this guy check this one as well all right a little bit intro what the connectors are and uh, what they're responsible for this is your actuator connector connector c this guy it's also injector harness we're going to test this connector and uh, this front one at the top this is an oem connector b which is just next here and it's for oem harness this bottom one is a senior connector or oem connector a this guy we're not touching that at, at the moment we don't need to worry about it and also you can see here there's a round there is your Deutz Deutz connector which is going to OEM harness under the dash where you can hook up your scanner and read the codes and check the data of the computer don't worry about that we're most going to test this guy right now this is your Deutz Deutz six pin connector for diagnostics. Don't worry about this guy. We're down to engine computer, ECU, aka ACM. I disconnected the harnesses and we'll get back to them in a minute. But simple first thing. Check the ground here for the harness. This is your C connector. This is the injector harness, actuator harness. This one, which is connects to the back port. Check this guy. Clean it if needed. Very important. And here is a fuse, 10 amps fuse on a harness. Make sure fuses. Not blown, that's one, check that guy, and we're going to those connectors. You don't need to worry about this connector. We'll start testing, let's just tight our ground, I clean that, make sure it's all good. Okay, nice and tight. And our fuse is good. I'll put a cap back and uh, show you. I have a pin laid out for the connectors, and we're interested in this, as I said, connector C. And uh, for the test, we need a multimeter. And I one connect, lead I hooked up to the ground, this is alligator, and um, another one I have with a tip in to test for the power. Okay, and uh, we're interested in connect pin number 16, which is a fuel solenoid signal. Another Pin number 26, as you can see here, 26, that is a ignition supply voltage. And pins number 23, 22, 21, and 20, there are switched battery voltage. And pin 9, 25, and 27 battery negative ground to supply to ECM. Those pins we're going to test. Let's go turn our key to the on position Our master switch night switch on there you go uh, our data there's no engine computer see when computers respond and you see the you will see the sign but there's no that is error data that's just fine I'm going to test. Okay. 
Okay, my uh, key is on and uh, yeah, let's go check the 26 ignition supply. 26, one, two, three, third. Set a multimeter here and you can see. Okay, see, we're getting a battery voltage, which is good, 12.6. Okay, switch battery voltage 23, 22, 21, and 20. Okay, where's uh, 23, 22, 21, and 20? Which is this row. Okay, let's start it from the top. No, we're not 20. Yep. Uh, 21, 22, and 23. Uh, no, this one's wrong. One, two, three, four. Right. One, two, three. Yeah, we're good with the uh, ignition switch voltage. Let's. Here's a actuator connector C laid out, and I tested pin number 16 fuel solenoid, and also I checked the ground pins number 9, 25, 27, battery negative to the ECU, and we tested pins number 23, 22, 21 and 20 switch battery voltage and pin number 26 ignition power supply. We have power, we have a ground, that's not an issue, we confirm that. This is your uh, fuel shut off solenoid, this is an electric magnet. When it power supply to the magnet, it pulls the plate is a disc plate with a, a spring washer blocking the fuel line, fuel passage. And when it's energized, it pulled back with a magnet and a fuel can flow. And uh, I disconnected this line and uh, you should read 12 volt battery voltage on this wire. And uh, when the solenoid energized, you will hear the click. Let's go and turn the key to the on position. Okay. Okay. See the check engine light is on. Okay. And uh, all right. Listen for a click. That means solenoid is operating. It's working. That's um, very often they're getting to fail and fuel cannot pass the solenoid shut off well, and uh, that's a problem. Yeah, check this one. That's so easy. Okay, put it back. Yep, yeah, there's another way to do it. It's just a bypass. It's totally up to you. Just be careful. Make sure a hot wire won't touch the ground, otherwise it'll create a shirt. Yeah, just uh, bypassed and uh, that way you will be able to make it home. It's like a quick fix, but for uh, diagnostic purposes you can yeah, try that as well. All right. <clears throat> we'll show you how to get rid of the air on this type of pump. Just keep watching. This is more about the fuel delivery and the fuel pressure. There is a spider uh, connection I mean, between the air compressor shaft and the pump, fuel injection pump. And it, how it works, there is a sort of plastic insert in between. Make sure that uh, spider you know, connection or like bushing is not damaged or installed properly is not missing. If it's missing, you won't have a working pump or just there's a four bolts to here, two in the back, remove them. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. And checked if you have any concerns why you're not getting a fuel even when your uh, solenoid is activated and you filled up your filter and the pump and there's still no pressure. That can be one of the things, what's wrong.
before you blame the pump. Hey, talking about the uh, bleeding the air from the fuel system, what do you do? You just uh, take the fuel filter off, fill it up with the fresh diesel fuel, put it back, and then you crack this screw and take that guy off and fill it up the pump with a fresh diesel and then tie it back and what I did also I just crack this line to get air if someone was left in a pump or in a line to purge it out and uh, yeah and also that's what I did uh, here's a re return As you can see here I crack this fitting just a half a turn one turn to let some air get pushed out and uh, yeah then go and crank the engine and uh, make sure your solenoid works and then we will keep cranking and then fuel pressure will build up and push the air out and it will fire it up as soon as it fired up go and tight this allen and uh, this fitting and that fi that fitting as well that's it and what i did i just put a rag it's a spill kit pad just uh, put it here make sure it won't spill much and uh, yep that's what i did worked well the diesels they're very simple engines to run and like any other engine it needs a fuel it needs air it needs a compression and now we're chasing what controls the fuel and then we have a fuel fuel delivery to the fuel rail uh, we don't have any air in the system all purged but cranks and no start and we're going after that as i said what controls the injection pulls and injectors and uh, there's an ECU and ECU receives the timing signal from the engine sensor, which is down there. It's hard to see, but I will try it. Let's turn my flasher on. Okay, here we go. That guy is your um, engine sensor. It's called like a cam sensor. Well, there's uh, your timing cover and it's picking the timing signal and it's a four wire sensor and it sends the signal to the ECU and then ECU can figure it out when to activate the injectors and those sensors normally go bad they're known to fail over time but before blame the sensor just check the wiring check the connectors check the if any damage and what happened to those sensors over time they get, got scuffed up and there started leaking oil entirely out and as if you can see oil is coming through the sensor wiring I means sensor is leaking and it's cracked and there's a 1116 uh, socket for it same pretty much as a oxygen sensor socket and it's a little bit hard to get there with a wrench probably won't be able to do it yep you can uh, check for that socket and see if uh, any oxygen sockets oxygen sensor sockets will work and uh, yesterday evening i found what was wrong and what caused that problem crank no start as you can see there is a wiring harness and the connector to the engine sensor i disconnected that and i looked down and i found that wiring harness to the sensor was jammed in between the engine block and air compressor bracket at some point someone replaced the air compressor and didn't probably see that happening and jam the wire in between the bracket and engine block well as you can see i'm pulling the wire and there yeah two wires jammed in between and um, yeah someone did a great job replaced the air compressor whatever they did but yep that's what's happened well we'll make mistakes and well someone did that mistake fortunately but that took a little bit of while to troubleshoot and when i filmed this video that was the evening and next day i filmed a little bit more to show you 
more troubleshooting steps that might help someone as you can see <laughs> those two wires for the sensor they're squeezed there's no con way continuity there or electricity can flow and uh, yeah I like simple as that it just checked for broken wires and where the wire technically can be damaged and all those contact points when wiring harness can rub against sharp metal parts or even obviously saying if someone did a repair or just like last repair probably just go there and check if everything's assembled properly okay I'm going to fix those wires and that should do it and I know that <laughs> kinda well, that's what was in the truck, it's what I found, and if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below, I will be glad to help you if I can, and let's go and fire up an engine. Okay, the wires are fixed, let's go. Let's just turn now. This is an engine sensor connector. This is the male side, and then we have a female there. And um, what I want to do is just check for any water intrusion. If this uh, rubber seal is missing or got dried up, cracked, or got cut, that could get some water in, and the like rusty crusty will happen, and uh, will not get electricity to flow. You know, this uh, resistance is. Incre and will increase the resistance. Other thing, to what to look for? Sometimes it looks good and like there's no water clean, or you cleaned up and spray the WD-40 dried up. You looked inside, make sure the pin that wasn't pushed in. Sometimes that can happen, and then you kind of you connect it, click, but there's no contact in between the two parts of the connector or wire can get pulled out from the connector itself you take this cap off and see if it's all connected sometimes it can break even inside the connector or or over here you can see but sometimes you even cannot see and uh, one pin slightly pulled pushed in and that will do the big difference okay <laughs> well if your truck sit for so long Diesel fuel, uh, same as any other fuels, can deteriorate and go bad, they expire it. And make sure you have a fresh, good diesel in a tank. Or even before, go and try to fire it up, make sure you have a fuel in the tank. Because it can crank and no fuel if you're not a driver or you don't know the history of the truck. Just to take a filler cab off and uh, yeah, check if you have a fuel or check that the fuel gauge if it works. <laughs> <laughs> 